and formally welcome everyone to the uh, call. So, uh, um, as, as I said a few minutes ago, I hope uh, you've all had a fantastic and rested uh, weekend. Um, okay, uh, so w welcome to the call. Uh, in terms of our so agenda for today, if I just share my screen for a moment, the two things that I said we'd talk about. One is to uh, give a quick pricey of uh, uh, the, the topics which were uh, discussed. Uh, sorry, at the um, um, European Union or sorry, European Commission's high-level group on internet governments uh, from last week, uh, Friday morning, to be precise, at least European time. Um, I'll call out some of the topics of interest from the uh, uh, forthcoming Internet Governance Forum um, in in a week's time. Um, and for anyone else that's attending, either in person or remotely, feel free as I go through these uh, to call out anything else you think may be of interest to this group. Bearing in mind, anyone that's looked at the agenda, there's a lot on the agenda. So um, I'm only calling out a small fraction of those things uh, that, that are on, that are on the agenda. There, there's there's plenty of stuff. Uh, and I'm sure I've missed some really obvious things. So uh, your eyes on it and suggestions, um, I, either during the call or for that matter, email me afterwards will be much appreciated. Uh, and then as always, we're sort of talk about some of the recent news headlines. Um, there's certainly a couple of things that I think will be uh, worthy of discussion. Um, and then I just sort of remind you of some forthcoming events and uh, some of the future topics uh, for this call. And uh, um, welcome any, uh, any other business that anyone wants to raise uh, as always whilst we're on the call uh, so that's the plan uh, f for the call um, so let's start with a quick uh, sort of, uh, uh, review of the uh, discussion last week last uh, Friday with the uh, European uh, Commission uh, it was a sort of half day call um, and I'm going to summarise it in one slide, so I'm obviously not going to do uh, justice to the discussion, but it, it was more so people are aware of uh, what was covered. Um, and in case anyone was wondering, uh, these calls are not uh, recorded. Um, I think they do make notes available, but not uh, not recording the call. So if you don't attend live, um, there's no opportunity to properly catch up um, afterwards. Uh, so do bear that in mind. Uh, the calls themselves take place, I think, three times a year. May may even be quarterly. I, I can't remember, but at least every 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 few months. Um, uh, the the, the sort of technically, it's a one day meeting uh, of which the morning session is an open session for uh, for uh, anyone to attend. Although you have to register um, uh, in advance, um, and then the afternoon session is just for the representatives from the member states who are also present in the morning. Um, uh, the, the way they've just revised the format slightly. Um, the Commission team and any member state representatives that wish to can attend in person um, in Brussels. Um, the uh, uh, other attendees to the open meeting uh, uh, attend remotely. Uh, where previously you could attend either in person uh, in Brussels or remotely, whereas they've moved to uh, um, make, make it uh, remote only for guests to the uh, meeting. Um, anyway, um, just to sort of call out the topics that that were covered, um, give you a very brief uh, summary of, of those. Um, firstly, uh, there's just a, sort of a bit of a discussion of some of the um, recent um, sort of, uh, legislative uh, milestones that had uh, cropped up, um, such as the AI Act and the uh, confirmation of the NIST two legislation, which. Uh, formally kicks in next i think it's middle of next october um but the uh, the, the legislation is already enacted by by the uh, uh eu um the member states have got through to up until um, mid october next year to uh, have it implemented um in national legislation uh so just a sort of summary of some of that legislation um then there was a presentation um uh, from one of the Commission team with their thoughts on um, Web 4. 
um, which is a topic that's going to be covered um, amongst other things at the IGF and other places. So it's very much going to be a theme um, promoted by the uh, uh, Commission. Um, and, and that's, uh, um, I think, sort of holographic quality um, uh, uh, avatars, uh, you know, full interaction, you know, you know et cetera, et cetera. So they're sort of skipping over Web3 uh, on, on, onto Web4. And if people are interested, I can circulate a proper definition after this call. Um, so they talked a bit around that just to sort of highlight that that's going to be um, one of their areas of focus going forward. Um, uh, they also mentioned some legislation, not some legislation, um, uh, some funding that they'd made available, which I'll confess I'd missed. Um, uh, so I, this was of interest to, to me uh, to try and encourage um, enhanced participation by civil service organisations. Um, they're in the final throes of uh, awarding funding under two lots. Um, I'm just referring to my notes, one of four million euros and the second one of three and a half million euros, broadly speaking, to, to drive up better um, cooperation or sort of better participation by civil service organisations. Um, the, the, the four million euro lot it specifically calls out the importance of engaging in multilateral and uh, multi-stakeholder fora such as the ITU, ITF, ICANN, IGF and others. Um, with regards to digital uh, for development, uh, internet governance, digital rights, um, standard setting uh, and inclusion. Uh, and then the second lot um, for three and a half million euros is, is more around uh, uh, enhancing global north, global south uh, cooperation between um, CSOs and strengthening capacity of uh, uh, CSO civil society organizations. Um, so, so yeah, just a shade under uh, 8 million euros of funding. Um, they sounded like they were very close to the award of the funding. So potentially there will be further information on this again at, at the IGF, assuming they've finalized the, the awards um, by then. Um, so uh, presumably therefore it'll be this week that they were hoping to uh, um, sign contracts um, or whatever. So as I say, I was unaware that was happening. I'd missed the announcement. So I thought that was really interesting. Um, and in my view, a good thing. Uh, that they are, are, are doing that because I think it's sorely needed to have more capacity within civil society groups and more engagement in the whole multi-stakeholder process. Um, uh, the, the, then sort of a bit of a discussion about the, the Global Digital Compact and again this being an area of focus for the coming months from the uh, Commission. Uh, which I can't really think about a great deal to say about that, but other, other than it is, uh, and they will be. Um, and then, unsurprisingly, they touched on the forthcoming Sir IGF meeting um, with a sort of presentation from uh, one of the uh, sort of UN sort of, sort of uh, people uh, just talking about it, um, and some of the sort of dignitaries and others that are participating. Um, and then under any other business, uh, Mike Tunks, who some of you will know from the Internet Watch Foundation, um, just brought up uh, CSAM, given that's uh, currently working its way through the uh, sort of European Union sort of legislative process. There, there wasn't much discussion ar around that because the Commission team don't tend to talk about topics which are going through the legislative process for obvious reasons, um, but they were sort of happy for Mike to bring it up under any, any other business and just call out some of the issues uh, and the reason for why there was a need for the legislation as he saw it. Um, and that in a nutshell were the sort of key points that were covered on the agenda uh, at the HLIG. Um, I don't know if anyone on this call also attended and if you did if there was anything so sort of important you think i've overlooked or oversimplified so just pause in case anyone's got anything um to add um which will be well very welcome if you did and i should say feel free just to unmute and add it if you, if you do or, or pop something in the chat if that was easier I'm just scanning down the list of attendees. I'm not sure if any of you were on the call. 
And since no one's raising their hand, I'm, I'm suspecting you probably weren't. Okay, uh, as I say, unfortunately, it's not recorded. I'm not entirely sure why, because I think it'd be really useful if it was available for future reference. But uh, that's a decision of the Commission team. So so uh, if, if that sort of general discussion is of interest going forward, feel free to let me know and I'll um, make sure you're aware when they announce the date of the next meeting. They usually announce it about a month in advance. Um, uh, and then sometimes the agenda is made available a, a week or so beforehand, although for some reason this time it wasn't until it was announced during the call on the day. Uh, Emily, sorry, you've got a question. Uh, feel free to unmute and, and ask it. Thanks, Thanks a lot, lot, Andrew. Um, I, I had intended to to attend the meeting, but, but couldn't on the day, so this is a really useful summary. I was just wondering whether the enhanced participation by civil society organisations was it was it billed as a sort of anticipatory response to the WISIS plus twenty because it sounds very like that kind of thinking you know in a way sort of thinking through some of the um, the weaknesses of the current multi stakeholder environment and trying to put some you know, put some measures in place beforehand. And so that was my first question. And the second was, and apologies if you've covered this, but was the Global Digital Compact, what sort of mood music did you pick up in terms of the way that that was introduced? Did did you feel that the, because I've been picking up a lot of concerns that it's it's viewed as a sort of IGF killer and, um, and and I wondered how the the commission had handled that um, that issue. Um, so on the first question, um, there's a multilateralism and digitalisation um, uh, initiative within the commission, and uh, the sort of the the funding was was sort of positioned as being one of the key outputs from that. Um, so I don't remember it being linked directly to WISIS. I, I, I may have overlooked it because I was trying to make a few notes as we went along. Um, uh, but I don't think it it was, although there was discussion about WISIS and various other things more generally, but not uh, that was more linked to the Go Global Digital Compact and the overall sort of processes. So I don't think so, Is uh, not that I recall. Is probably an unsatisfactory answer to the first question, and if only there was a recording, I could check afterwards, Emily, and answer you properly. But I don't believe so. Um, on the second question, the Global Digital Compact, um, I'm trying to remember how how, how that was covered. Um, but, because they they had three speakers uh, c came on to sort of g give their perspectives on it. So perhaps if I explain that, that might make my answers more useful. So uh, Arpad Seco uh, from the European External Action Service, uh, Paul Wilson, Director General of APNIC, and Chris Buckridge, um, who many of you will know previously of RIPE, now an independent internet governance expert and uh, currently serving as a member of the UN Internet Governance Forum Multi-Stakeholder Advisory Group, which is a, a long series of titles. Um, probably the main, spring, main thing that springs to mind was some concern from Paul, Paul Wilson from APNIC, uh, whether this was marginalising the role of the, the sort of technical community. Uh, and that really played to a letter that he and a couple of other co-signatories circulated a few weeks ago, um, just raising their concerns because he, I think he felt they, they'd be lumped together um, with the other constituents in the multi-stakeholder community rather than being called out as a distinct and separate uh, stakeholder group. So that was probably the most, not contentious as such, because it wasn't really a contentious discussion, but as much as there was anything contentious, that was the most contentious aspect of it that I can recall um, uh, in it. Um, yeah, uh, I can't really... 
think much else to say about that um, uh, emily i think they sort of downplayed it but uh yeah you got three perspectives from um, those um individuals um so um the commission team didn't directly say so much but but left it to the three others to sort of give their points of view um and then opened up to see if there were any questions and there weren't really many um on anything to be honest in, including um on that so i don't know if that answers the question but it's about the best i can do um off the top of my head i'm afraid i'll take Oh, sorry, you put it in the chat. Uh, yeah, hopefully that that, that that was good. Um, yeah, um, yes. So anyway, so, so that was that, that was it. Um, as I say, in terms of the uh, high level um, group on internet governance, and um, we'll repeat the offer. If, if anyone that doesn't ordinarily attend and would find it useful, drop me a line separately, and I'll just make you aware when the uh, next one comes up, so you uh, know to register. Because you have to pre-register to to get the uh, call-in details, um, etc. Um, there's usually the better part of a hundred people in attendance. I think from memory, this time around there are about seventy odd online. And I couldn't tell how many were in the room, but the commission team were all in the room, uh, as were member state representatives. So probably around 100 overall, give or take, um, participating in the morning discussion. OK, let me move on then to uh, the forthcoming uh, Internet Governance Forum. Um, I'll reiterate my um, health warning, um, which is that you know, it's a very complex agenda. This is a tiny s uh, sort of snippet of some of the things that thus far have uh, caught my eye. Um, I will be sort of continuing to go through the agenda because it, it takes a lot of time to go through it and then check whether the planned content for a session when you click through to the individual um, uh, material matches the uh, title because um, sometimes there can be a bit of a mismatch between the two um uh, so i will update uh, this and then I'll, I'll send the slides out afterwards if it's useful um but uh, in in order it starts on sunday um so this this coming sunday um uh, which is uh, uh Unsurprisingly, the first thing that caught my eye was uh, DNS Foundation for a Safe, Secure and Interoperable uh, Internet, uh, which I think ICANN are hosting that. Um, uh, there, there's, there's also uh, a number of AI focus se uh, sessions, one of which uh, uh, on, on the Sunday, multi-stakeholder discussion on uh, issues with generative AI. No great surprise that uh, AI does feature on, on the agenda at various points uh, uh, th this year. Uh, and also throughout day zero on the Sunday, there's a Global Internet Governance Academic Network Annual Symposium, which is a bit, again a bit of a mouthful, which runs pretty much throughout the whole day. Um, all of the other sessions are typically uh, an hour, hour and a half, um, sort of give or take, whereas that uh, actually runs through the day. Um, I've not previously sort of attended that so i don't have any experience of it but the sort of title sounds interesting and it's on my list of things to look at properly this week to see if that's worth going along but i'll happily take input from anyone else if you feel uh, if you have any any opinions on that one way or the other if if you're planning to attend or, or have done um previously um and then on the Monday, uh, again, AI1, International Cooperation on AI and Digital Governance. Um, and I, I should also say the timings, I think these are right, but again, I'll be rechecking these in case I uh, got my wires crossed um, as I was sort of, sort of cross-referencing the agenda and trying to sort of make notes. Um, uh, practical toolkits for AI risk mitigations for businesses. Um, follows on that so you'll see a theme on some of the ai stuff there uh, uh yeah and yes arno it is in uh kyoto uh yeah sorry i should have said that so uh, yes it's kyoto starting on sunday running through till um thursday 
Uh, another DNS session, closing the government gaps, new power lines for a safer, safer DNS uh, on, the, on the Monday, which I would definitely be going to. Um, and then there's a dinner in the evening um, with uh, one of the UK ministers, John Whittingdale, uh, which nominated a hosting and which they mentioned to me that if anyone on this call would like an invite, please let me know and I'll let them know. So if you're planning to be there in person, not remotely, because that'd be a bit pointless going to dinner. Uh, remotely, but if you are in Kyoto and, and would like an invite to that, um, um, sort of contact me directly and I'll, I'll put you in touch with uh, Nominet. But that starts at 6 30 on the Monday um, uh, evening. And that should be an interesting uh, discussion after the end of the first full day. Um, although Sunday's pretty full as well, to be fair. Um, okay, rolling into the Tuesday uh, again, another DNS1 current developments in DNS privacy. Um, and then various encryption things. So uh, encryption is rolling, safeguarding human rights. Um, uh, perils of encryption, um, to say oh, I can't finish there. A good pun, if nothing else, for a title. Um, wearing my IWF hat for a moment. Safer digital futures for children, aligning global agendas. Uh, and protecting children online. Um, uh, and then another uh, DNS one, uh, current developments in DNS. Also, oh, I put that in twice. Apologies. Um, so, so that's in later on in the afternoon. The DNS privacy one, um, uh, followed by a, a child safety uh, on, online one. And as I say, there's a lot of other stuff uh, also on the Tuesday. Um, so again, that's a very small fraction. Um, running through on the Wednesday, uh, uh, risks and opportunities for a new UN cybercrime convention. Um, and a new generation of platform regulation. So you can see some themes again coming through on, on this and then harnessing AI for, for child protection. So, um, et cetera, uh, uh, effects of weakening uh, encryption policies will be an interesting um, discussion. And I know Meredith Whittaker, amongst others, is, I think, present in Kyoto. So I'm, uh, I suspect that's one she may well be uh, attending at the, the uh, president of uh, Signal. She and I often... Uh, um, swap differing points of view on social media, or say often we, we do from time to time. So it'd be good to have that discussion um, directly. Um, and, and, and so on the final one I mentioned there is a workshop on internet fragmentation perspectives. Um, uh, uh, just to sort of, uh, finish for the Wednesday. And then I'll move through to the Thursday and then I'll go back to the ones that uh, um, Emily's posted in the chat to signpost those uh, as well. Uh, it, I think it can be an interesting discussion, public private partnerships on content uh, moderation uh, on, the, on the Wednesday morning. Uh, so ethics and AI um, following that. Um, then an open forum on the multi staker model and uh, uh, Driver for Global Services and the uh, Sustainable Development Goals, uh, which I think will be good. Um, in the afternoon, the ITF are hosting an open forum, um, which will be interesting, and I do plan to go to that. Uh, then you've got the risks and rewards of generative AI. Um, and the last one was the uh, European Parliament delegation and uh, youth IGF uh, have got a workshop. Um, and there's a whole bunch of again more than that and i will be adding more to, to the list but if um but emily you put a couple of things in in the chat you just want to sort of expand on those slightly in case that is of interest to anyone on the call yeah thank you very much one is a timing for a workshop that you kindly picked up in um uh, i think that's on the Monday that begins at 1700 local time and that's about closing the governance gaps I think on the there we go too many slides yeah closing the governance gaps that's um, a dynamic coalition on DNS issues so we've um, been working with VeriSign and the US um, NTIA to revive a slightly dormant uh, dynamic coalition on DNS issues and so this is our first sort of um, uh, a go at that at the global IGF. It's closely based on a workshop we did at the Eurodig on the same issue. So it's it's a sort of counterpart to the debates in within the DNS community about how you define DNS abuse. So if you define it very narrowly as the DNS industry 
um, prefers because that sort of gets to the scope of um, the sphere of influence of, of DNS providers, then you've got a huge hinterland of other stuff that needs to be dealt with. And so this is a sort of uh, trying to get that conversation started about the hosting environment, third levels, and even uh, we might even include a, a, a smattering of um, alternative naming systems like blockchain domains. Um, so that's mm -hmm. just a timing and a little bit of background for that one on the Monday. And then on the Tuesday, <laughs> um, we've organised a workshop um, called the Internet in 20 Years Time, which is trying to kind of um, examine the issue of fragmentation to, through a sort of fun and future looking um, uh, lens. And that begins, I think, at 11 o'clock local time. And we've got a really amazing panel on that. And we'll be basing it around sort of three scenarios, one which, which is, you know, loosely brilliant one is terrible and one is a sort of continuation of what we've got today but just a bit a little bit worse and so it's sort of trying to rather than thinking well you know people always clam up when they're asked to to figure out what exactly will happen in the future but if you can play with different scenarios then you start to to loosen people up a bit and think about well what would we have to do now if we wanted to get the better future for us all the ideal future so that's what we're hoping for anyway so um i've posted some details um in the chat and um it would be wonderful to see anybody who's attending either in person or, or remotely so thank you for giving me the floor andrew no worries so um I'll, I'll add those to the slides before I send them out. And, and for clarity, I, I will be sort of double checking the, all, all the timings, local, I'll put local times, obviously, for all these um, uh, where, where they're not on there. And also to just uh, confirm the physical locations for anyone that's uh, um, joining in person as opposed to uh, remotely. Uh, and I'll put the, the, the links to the agendas uh, for each of them as well. Um, so you got the uh, uh, hyperlink to the more detailed explanation of the content for each one. Um, so assume that uh, there'll be fuller information um, and more of them. Um, but uh, before I send the slides out, but does anyone else, I don't know if anyone else has had a chance even to look at the agenda for, for, for this. And if so, is, is anything else you want to uh, call out that you think will be um, to, uh, a good session to uh, attend or need any comments on any of those that I've just uh, quickly um, skimmed through. I'll just pause, give you a chance to, to either unmute and say something or pop it in the chat if that's easier. I don't think anyone's typing at the moment. I, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, Andrew. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I, I, I know here. Yeah, I, it's painful for me to see some of what I see in this, uh, in this, <laughs> in this agenda, of course. Um, hmm. it, it's really hard to see how much we are going in a collision crash when I see some of what I see here with ATF in parallel. Yeah. I, I don't know how we are going to heal ourselves at some point, if we can, but there are clearly things that are going to hurt massively uh, what is happening. So I don't know if uh, the proponents for a totally encrypted world uh, understand in which Terrible status is cybersecurity today, but it's going to worsen the situation with no idea of a migration plan, with no idea on how we can help organizations to move at a different pace or in a different way. But frankly speaking, this is shocking. Mm. The only thing I, I would like you to do on a side note is um, I think there was a particularly eye-opening session at the Open IAB of IETF 117 in San Francisco on fragmentation uh, by uh, Nick Merrill, a very, very good study he made on 
on the fact he does not understand the term fragmentation. So I would be really curious uh, what's going to be said about fragmentation. Okay, uh, well, uh, as I say, I'll, I'll put links to all the sessions uh, in in the slides when I send them out. Oh, no, that's a, that's a good point. And from what Nick said, he may well be one of the people that attends um, the, the, the the IGF. I think he I'm trying, I'm desperately trying to remember. I think he may have hinted at, uh, at that. Um, but but you're right. That was a good <laughs> session, one way or, or, or another. Um, so yeah, well well uh, reminded. Um, just for fun, by the way, to give you a sense of the complexity um, of the uh, um, IGF agenda, I will just flip um, my screen to share it's a <laughs> spreadsheet that gives you a, an idea. That's for days. Um, so give you an idea of the number of different sessions and you can see quite a few in parallel um and, and that continues um uh, with some cases even oh more. my god oh my god each day so uh i think day three probably has the most individual sessions so there's a lot there um uh which is why i i would genuinely welcome if anyone else has had a chance to put a sort of note in any sessions of interest feel free to let me know because it's entirely possible i, I may have overlooked something um uh, in, entirely obvious but that just gives you a sense of uh, how much content I I is there there's, there's a lot of it um so it's easy to uh, uh, uh miss stuff um uh, content rich i think will be a good, good positive way of uh, uh putting it so which is why I'm really looking forward to it other than the uh, stress of having to make lots of decisions on what to attend um, and what <clears throat> to miss but as, as I say if anyone's got anything you want to draw draw my attention to feel free to uh, drop, drop me a line afterwards um, uh, as appropriate okay uh, so expect the slides with uh, hyperlinks in and uh, more content and, and, uh, and a bit, bit more information on, on the timings etc so i'll send those out in the next couple of days um, before heading off on friday just skip through these um right so moving on um to some of the, the, uh, the news headlines uh, in case you missed it, um, there was an announcement, um, I think it was the back end of last week from Cloudflare, uh, that they were supporting the new standard, uh, Encrypted Client Hello. Um, it's not actually standard yet. Um, I think that was their PR team taking a few liberties um, uh, in the wording of the announcement. But anyway, uh, they made a, a number of different announcements uh, last week, uh, one of which was um, pretty much high profile on their support for um, ECH. Um, uh, you know, and w without any mention that, for example, enterprises, um, education establishments and others should use it with great care. Um, uh, and uh, you may be aware, and for some reason I haven't put it on the side, where we, we do have an internet draft where we're trying to document what uh, some of the issues are posed to certain groups and what, if any, mitigations there might be. Um, so uh, that was one of the announcements of uh, last week. Uh, there, there was also um, an interesting sort of further article we discussed this a few weeks back on extended DNS errors. So it was a nice piece um uh, on, on that which is uh, worth a look um and then very security related uh, pieces one on uh, just a sort of general piece on problems posed by dns uh, in terms of security to to enterprises and what some of the mitigations are including amongst others uh, use dns sec uh, and i think somebody responded on the uh one of the main lists um that yeah people really should be using dnssec don't know why they aren't um or, or words to, to, to that effect um there are also more, more details from uh, uh, zhang li um uh, on uh, sort of threat posed to dns uh, cache poisoning by um a, a new attack targeting conditional dns uh, resolvers um and and then various other things on uh, sort of uh, such as from Netscout on uh, sort of DDoS attacks um, uh, and versus the bits and bobs. Uh, the, a piece uh, yeah, as Emily's on this is good. 
um, to, uh, from DNS uh, Research Federation talking about their Internet Standards Tracking uh, Observatory, which uh, Emily talked about on this call maybe a year ago, Emily, actually, if I remember rightly, give or take. Um, I think it was. Uh, so good to see how that um, continues um, and, and, and some other stuff uh, as well. Uh, probably like, I mentioned the one at the bottom of the, the, the slide. Uh, quite a useful recap from the OARC team on some of the uh, sort of key content that was presented um, at the uh, recent OARC 41 uh, meeting um, in Vietnam, which seems like it was absolutely ages ago, whereas in reality it was uh, a month ago. Uh, which is well, slight marginally less than a month ago, uh, uh, which is uh, qu quite scary, but hey -oh. um <clears throat> Just a couple of things that caught my eye, and uh, not uh, so directly relevant, but uh, yeah, it's good news to see that tech layoffs, tech layoffs according to TechCrunch, are all but uh, a thing of the past. Um, certainly the number of announcements on any layoffs seems to have sort of dampened down somewhat, uh, which is in general terms a good thing. Rather scary, there was a piece about how chat GP, GPT can now browse the internet, which I'm very unsure if that's a, a good thing. Um, and then the last one there I just mentioned, which caught my eye, it was because uh, the AdGuard blog always puts in interesting stuff. I'm a big fan of the AdGuard blog, and uh, one of them was about uh, uh, cars spying on you um, and the data that's extracted from spying on you being um, made widely available to third parties by the uh, manufacturers. Um, so surveillance capitalism as a model lives on. Um, yeah, is it probably no great surprise, but not, not really a good thing in, in my view. Uh, just a reminder on sort of forthcoming deadlines, the most obvious one that springs to mind, the end of this week is the deadline if you want to put forward any proposals for sessions at uh, next May's um, RSA conference in San Francisco, so it may be sort of six months or so away, but uh, the uh, deadline um, is in, in a few days time, um, there's a few other things coming up, but uh, um, that was a bit further off. The, the other one, which I think we mentioned on the call last week, is the call for presentations for OARC. You see at the bottom of that slide has already opened up, uh, but you, you do have till um, the latter part of November to uh, respond. But obviously, the earlier the better. Um, I think the program committee you know, will won't be waiting for the deadline before responding to things. Or at least they haven't in the past. I don't believe. Plenty of events coming up. Um, one which I noted, which I hadn't picked up before, um, there's a uh, there's a call this week, uh, DNS Threat Intelligence, um, which may be of interest to some of you. You have to register for that, um, uh, but uh, you can hear ID, IDC's thoughts on the topic in exchange for some of your data. So that may be of interest to some people. And then, unsurprisingly, we get into uh, the IGF next week um, and Morg as as well. So uh, plenty of different calls on people's time, and then uh, pretty soon afterwards it's Nanog, I can, <laughs> uh, and then we're in, in, be in Prague for ITF 118 before we know it. So lots of stuff still on the agenda through this year, and then we start all over again um, uh, next year. Uh, so, because I'll be in Japan, um, I don't plan to uh, um, be on the call at about uh, sort of two, three a.m. In, in, in the morning this time next week. So, apologies in advance uh, for, for that. But, uh, but uh, I will pick up um, with a more considered view of some of the content, uh, some of the issues arising from um, IGF um, on the sixteenth. And again, anyone else that's attending in either in person or remotely, uh, feel free to join that discussion and contribute to it as you see fit. Um, the, 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 probably the only other one I'll, I'll mention because it sort of came up on one of the mailing lists uh, as a conversation today in response to uh, me calling out some of the issues posed or challenges posed to some use cases by ECH. We will be talking about uh, um, SNI versus DNS and the reliability of uh, both of those in a cyber security context because that's of concern to some people who are in favour. Of ECH, which I think is a valid concern, so that'd be a good topic to explore. 
Um, but uh, as I say, that prompted a few uh, e emails to be exchanged on the uh, one of the mailing lists um, today already. I think yes, it is. That's everything from me so apologies from uh, sort of largely talking at people today but uh want to uh yeah we have time uh so open up for um a any other business so any comments on any of that including the news items i skipped over quickly um or indeed anything else that um, anyone wants to raise um uh, as always uh either unmute um if, if it's easiest for you to talk or if you prefer put something in the chat if that's um, um simpler for you to do so uh, as i say any reflections on any of the things i've quickly rattled through or anything else uh unconnected to that that uh, you want to uh, highlight while we're on the call Always on, as always, I could pause for a minute or two to see if anyone's typing or suddenly has a thought or wants to uh, sort of jump in and speak. I'm not seeing anything in the chat, didn't see any hands raised, so I'm assuming that's not the case this week. Um, just a, a, one other thing to, while I think of it, uh, we discussed briefly last week the um, uh, issue of uh, um, potentially junk traffic being routed to the uh, root main servers um, and uh, what, if anything, uh, what, what sort of mitigation efforts should be taken within the uh, wider DNS ecosystem to try and reduce that. Uh, we will come back to that. Um, I'm hoping that Kurt will sort of come back on the call in, in the next week or so to sort of share some further thoughts. Um, and and when we're th then on the back of that, we'll schedule a time for uh, that to add to the uh, topics uh, for one of the calls, um, probably um, in early November, um, I suspect. Okay, I'm not seeing anything from anyone in the meantime, so I'm assuming there's nothing else anyone wants to add. So if that's the case, um, have a fantastic week. Um, if you're going to be um, in Kyoto, I'd be really good to uh, see you there. So do drop me a line and let me know. Um, um, otherwise, have a great week um, and hopefully sort of see some of you next week, um, 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 if, if not before. So uh, uh, see you later. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for your time. Thanks, Andrew.